Well, friends, we have another book, the book of Nahum, one of the minor prophets. Nahum is writing regarding Nineveh. It's a prophecy against Nineveh, against, therefore, the Assyrian Empire, where Nineveh is the capital city. You might remember we read Jonah, and Jonah was sent to Nineveh. And the shocking thing in Jonah was that the people responded to the message of Jonah, even the king, and they repented, and God sent mercy there for a, for a time to Nineveh. But now this announcement in Nahum tells us that that time of mercy is over, and God is bringing his judgment upon the nations, including the Assyrian Empire. So Nahum 1, it says, first of all, about the Lord, he's a jealous and avenging God. It's very important for us to realize this, that that jealousy has to do with his absolute dedication, loving and merciful dedication to his elect, his chosen ones. So in the Old Testament period to Israel and Judah, the Jews, but to in the New Testament period, it goes beyond that. Uh, to all the elect of the earth that are brought to the God of Israel through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's jealous. He loves you. He loves his children. And when someone would abuse his children, they have to answer to Almighty God. And that's very serious because he is a God who is wrathful, we're told. He takes vengeance upon his adversaries. And yes, while he is slow to anger, he's great in power, and he will by no means clear the guilty. So this is a very serious thing. Who is this God? Who is this God of Israel that we should fear him? Well, it says here that the clouds are the dust of his feet. Just think of such a statement as that, that God has authority over the clouds. He has authority over the sea. He can make it dry at any point. Just You could look at the vastness of the ocean and say, how would anybody dry up all of this? But God can do it. The mountains, the, think of the formidable mountains. The mountains quake before God and the world and all who dwell in it must also fear him. And yet so many would would imagine that they're more powerful than him or that somehow that they can worship false gods, idols of their own making, and somehow that there'll be an equivalence between the God of Israel and the, these false idols. Of course, there can't be. So Nahum says, who can stand before his indignation? And the obvious answer is nobody can. Who can endure the heat of his anger? But now there's also this, the Lord is good. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. That throughout the Bible is the issue for us. Will we take refuge in the God of Israel? Because he'll make a complete end of his adversaries, it says here. Now, here's a question that those who would stand against God should really think about. What do you plot against the Lord, the great I am? What, are your, what, is your, what is your plot against him? He's going to make a complete end of it. So from you came one who plotted evil against the Lord, he says to, to Nineveh. That's a worthless counselor, whoever came up with that plan. And though the Ninevites would be at full strength, and though there'd be many in the Assyrian Empire, they will be cut down and pass away. God says, I, I will break the yoke off of my people's neck that you've put on their neck. I'm going to break it off. Um, and I'm going to burst the bonds that you've put on, the chains that you put on my people. I'm going to burst those chains because they're going to be free. And from the house of your gods, I will cut off the carved image and the metal image. I'll make your grave for you are vile. So this is, look, this is serious stuff. Idolatry and oppression against 
God's elect, it will be punished. And this announcement in Nahum is a part of the good news that God will actually have complete victory over his and our enemies and that he is going to bring their pompous threats to an end. He's going to bring good news and peace now for his people because of the just destruction of their enemies. Father, thank you that your son, your son is coming again in glory. And we know, Father, that a judgment day is coming for the whole earth. And Father, we take refuge in your son, Jesus Christ, and we know that is the best place for us to be. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.